It's difficult for me to just consume it passively, kick my feet up and get some popcorn. Like, shout out to you guys, I'll binge the chosen. I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. <laughs> yeah, that's a gem. I'm Judas, I'm Kerryot. That's awkward. Seeing Judas be incorporated into the story, knowing how the story ends. The crucifixion, I'm assuming it's gonna go into him. Cause I know Dallas wanted to do seven seasons. This is why I think YouTube's important. This is why I think the chosen is important. Some of you guys think anything big, anything successful, anything that has numbers, anything that has impact is instantly of the devil. I would just say, Bruce Lawn. Here's a metaphor for you. When I first started eating food early on as a kid, as a teenager, I had a very different palate than I have now. There are certain foods I didn't like. Anything green, I didn't like. I didn't like veggies. I didn't like things that didn't look fried and pizza and stuff like that. As I grew up, I started introducing different foods and slowly my palate shifted. And the way it actually happened was that I knew that there was a superfood called avocado, but I didn't like it. I thought the food was gross. It looked gross, it looked gushy, yada, yada, yada. And so one day I was having a California burrito. And if you've ever been in California, you should have a California burrito. If you're ever in San Diego, hit me up. I might take you out for a California burrito. If you get a California burrito, usually it comes with something called guacamole. Guacamole has a lot of avocado in it. So the first time I had guacamole, which I thought I hated, was in a California burrito with carne asada, french fries, it was lit. And then I had this avocado inside of this guacamole. I was like, what is this? And they were like, oh, it's guacamole. I was like, ew, guacamole, right? But then I had it again, and then I had it again, and then I had it again. And now, over time, my palate, over time, changed with regards to eating more avocado, okay? Now I eat avocados raw. Sometimes I put a little salt on them, but I eat them raw. Avocado is a superfood. It's really good for you. You should really incorporate avocado. What am I talking about? Why am I talking to you guys? Because I think this is how content works. I think there are certain people that are completely just, blech, I don't like the church. I don't like Christianity. Maybe they had a bad experience. Maybe they're ignorant. Maybe they don't understand the benefits. Maybe they don't understand how important it is to incorporate things like Jesus into your life from an eternal perspective. And so when you already have a preconceived bias against something, sometimes bringing it into food like California Burrito, like YouTube, like Christian Hip Hop, like The Chosen, can slowly shift people's palate for it. This is why I think YouTube's important. This is why I think The Chosen is important. This is why I think Christian Hip Hop is important, is we can find a bajillion different things to be mad about. We could pick apart Lecrae's record and I could roast him for saying, Jesus gonna spin the block on your demons. Right, and I can say that's cringe, haha, -ha, right? People can find the chosen, find a kind of thing they don't like theologically and whoever is involved in the executive producing process and all that kind of stuff. We can find a bunch of things to be offended about, but the question is, are they offering a net positive to what's happening in culture? Are they offering a net positive with how people's perception of Jesus changed? And some of you guys, look, some of you guys think anything big, anything successful, Anything that has numbers, anything that has impact is instantly of the devil. I would just say, you're wrong. I don't care for you. We're not talking to you. I don't care to address it. But those of you guys that are like really trying to figure this out, consider the macro net positive. Consider that there's more people hearing about Jesus than ever before. And if you read, read the book of Philippians, Paul said, there are people that preach the gospel with false motives. There are people that have even done harm to Paul, the apostle Paul. But he says, hey, at the very least, I rejoice that the gospel is being preached. So I don't know all the theology of every single people on the chosen. From my understanding, there's all kinds of Catholics, Christians, Orthodox, everybody's involved. But I do believe that Jesus is on the throne now, and I do believe that Jesus reigns now, and I do believe Jesus can use technology and music and art and TV and, 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 and applications and f venture funding to, to, to get his word out, okay? Even if you disagree on some of the details, right? And I'm 100% with a correct view of, 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 of Jesus. And I think the chosen isn't doing anything that's counter Jesus. Unless you're just super duper nitpicky over like, they have Jesus building a table and he didn't build a table or why did, did it, right? Okay, so anyway, I say all that to say that I'm a fan of the chosen. I love the chosen. I support the chosen monthly by paying $15 a month. I love what they're doing and I think it's important. So we're gonna react to this trailer of the new season of the chosen. Um, I watched a little bit of this earlier when uh, Daryl sent it to me, and I, out the gate, I got goosebumps. I get goosebumps all the time, and uh, and some of you guys get offended because you think that the chosen's too emotional. You think that this and this and that and the other, right? And 
I would just say, I think they're doing a good job. Good art is emotional. Good art is going to drive you to feel something, to think something. You're losing something. I know what that's like. What are you losing? Time. Mm. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Someone touched me. If you are really the one who is to come, or should we look for someone else? Mm. Go and tell John what you hear and see. Who is it? Where did we stop? It's him. I'm Judas of Keriot. I have chosen you. That's awkward. Seeing Judas be incorporated into the story, knowing how the story ends, that's a little weird. I wonder how that's going to play out. Twelve, <laughs> as my apostles. Don't feel any different. I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. Yes! That's a gem. I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. What is stirring in your hearts? In the middle of such division and unrest, is Father God being revealed to you? Come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. A scourge of false prophecy must stop. Jesus, if you do not renounce your words, we will have no choice but to follow the law of Moses. the law of Moses. Jeez! Hey! They're here for Jesus of Nazareth. I am the law of Moses. Wow. Wow, that's such a, that's such a, whoo! More valuable than gold, more precious than rubies. Force them out. We are still Rome. You are right. More valuable than gold, more precious than rubies. Force them out. We are still Rome. Oh, snap. Yo, you guys are going into the crucifixion season three? I'm assuming season three is going to end at the at the uh, the crucifixion. I'm assuming it's going to go into him, unless it's the full-on crucifixion. So, because I know Dallas wanted to do seven seasons. So I'm assuming that's leading into Acts and the Ascension. Wow. <laughs> Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. I'm the one who caused their hunger. I should be the one to feed them. Wow. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Hey there, I'm Dallas, creator of The Chosen, and I just wanted hey, to tell you real quick that episodes one and two of season three launch in theaters November 18th. Yes, what? theaters. Before hey, that's the day after my son's birthday. Coming to The Chosen app along with the rest of the season. And if you're not caught up, please be sure to watch seasons one and two by looking up The Chosen in the app store or your streaming device. Wow, I gotta go. Okay. Man, The Chosen is one of those shows where, you know how if you read a book, when you can read a fiction book, you can just kind of power through it and super easy, super fun. But when you sit down to read a nonfiction book, a book that actually makes you act, a, a book that makes you do something with the information, you're not just reading it casually, you kind of got, you kind of get kicked, <laughs> kicked in your butt a little bit and you have to stop and, and process. That's what it's like watching The Chosen for me. I can't, it's difficult for me to just consume it passively and, and like kick my feet up and get some popcorn. Like every time I watch an episode, I'm just like crying and it's super intense. And I'm like reevaluating everything, right? And I think I think that's like, I have to like take it in bite-sized pieces. I don't know, shout out to you guys that like binge The Chosen. I'm in the middle of season two right now. And, and it, I have to like take like smaller steps to consume it because it's so thick in in depth and content and so many just implications of like what this means practically for me that um 
I have to take my time with it, if that makes sense, right? So I'm curious if you guys do the same thing with regards to how you consume The Chosen, because I can't just like power through. I think I watched like two or three uh, episodes of season one like that, but season two I got in and I was like, okay, this is this is some thick, heavy stuff. So that's how I am with watching The Chosen. Like, so even like going and watching back to back in theaters, I'm like, man, that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot. Like that's gonna be thick for me. But I but I would like to do it because I just I think it's so dope that they that they're doing it in theaters it serves a practical utility where like i'm trying to get my son to memorize some bible verses and we're, we're tr like the, the basics like the salvation my son is seven the basics the salvation right the the the, the meat and potatoes of what salvation is and what, what does it mean to be saved and we we go we went over um john chapter three right so this is jesus and nicodemus talking and we go over john chapter three and then in john chapter three it goes into the for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son and so it was really cool to be able to to read that to him and then like pull up the clip from Jesus and Nicodemus talking to kind of give him a visual demonstration of this. It was helpful. It was really helpful. And my son was like, wow, this is cool. I, but I don't think he could sit and just like watch a whole episode. I think it would be a lot for him to, to process, right? I, it's executed really well. It seems like it gets better and better and better and better with every season. Um, there was a jump in my, I mean, season one was already good, but there was definitely a jump from season one to season two. And it seems like season three is going to be even better. That trailer is amazing. So I'm excited. You guys, what do you guys think? Is, is I think that's a heat trailer. I think that's a W of a trailer. Um, I'm excited to see it, and I'm excited to see what they continue doing. I mean, it seems like they're they're packing a lot into these seasons because it seems like they're edging closer towards the crucifixion of Jesus, which I'm I'm not sure which season that's going to happen in, but uh, that's that's amazing.